Hey, hey, just like many others doing or helping out in agile adoptions, I used to uh, identify the Scrum Master or Scrum Masters and the Product Owner before we actually get things going into a Scrum-alike environment. The last couple of years I experimented with a different approach, not doing this anymore, and it works out very well. And now I feel it's time to share some of my uh, experimentations, learnings, and to myself at least a more humane approach towards this uh, adoption. Back in the old days when I identified who's going to be the Scrum Master, who's going to be the product owner, it became more of a, a kind of a formal role, which implied that we had to talk to HR, we had to talk to management, we had to go through all the agreements and so forth and so on. So it took quite some time for us to, to move ahead. At the same time, when we asked people who's going to apply for a Scrum Master or Product Owner, it became a scary situation because people were unsure if this scrummy thing would actually be sustainable and will continue in their organization. It's completely different, so it's a scary situation at all. So next to all the time that it took and being a scary situation, we sometimes ended up, to be honest, with the wrong people in the wrong role or in the wrong function at that moment in time. And getting away from it became difficult because it was formalized. So people could not just say, okay, um, today I'm a Scrum Master. It doesn't feel like working out for me. So next week I will do something else. Uh, same thing for a product owner, for example. So well, because any kind of change or feeling in this thing became a organizational structure thing. So pretty painful uh, over time. So. What did I change in my recent uh, engagements is that I actually fulfilled the role of Scrum Master and Product Owner as a collective. It's a, a kind of a cross-functional virtual team with volunteers from within the organization. It could be uh, team members, it could be managers, it could be HR people, it could be anything. Anybody who's interested to make the change reality was invited. And we then apply the community-based approach towards that change, following up on uh, what we call outcome-based trends metrics and the activities that we do, and we share everything amongst each other. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of experimental thing. Uh, what I noticed, because it's experimental, there was no change in title, there was no need to discuss with uh, or align with HR, management, do organizational structure changes. We, we basically ran it as a as a community, meaning that the volunteers come together and if they feel like I can contribute, I can, I feel joy, I feel impact, I feel valued in this community, then they will keep coming back and continue helping you to change the organization for the better. If they feel like, yeah, that's not really the thing I want to do in, uh, in the future or it doesn't fit me very well, then they don't come anymore. So it's uh, pretty much open and voluntary paced. What did I notice uh, in the last experiments over the last uh, couple of years is that we always end up with the right people. And if you end up with the right people, you get more of a sustainable change on going uh, from within the organization. So are we, to be honest, you might want or need to formalize things, but formalize those things and those roles as late as possible and only really when needed. Uh, I felt that having uh, team members, managers, other people from the organization joining a community and driving change forward being uh, a lot more humane than uh, having uh, uh, roles basically defined as functions and people attached to it and maybe even too much identified with it um, as it doesn't allow people to experiment and try, thing out, try things out before actually doing so. And I think it's a, it's, you cannot know what the Scrum Master needs to do. You cannot know what the Product Owner needs to do until you have done it. So giving the opportunity to people to experiment and try it out before really applying or formalizing anything, I think that's a, that's a great thing to have. For example, in one of the recent engagements uh, that I uh, help uh, people in an organization to simplify their structures, become more flexible, adaptable, agile in other words, uh, we have six teams working uh, behind or at, uh, at one product backlog, you could say. Uh, and in my old situation, I would have tried to find two or three dedicated full-time Scrum Masters and uh, one dedicated full-time product owner. 
Today, I stopped doing this and we are fulfilling the same thing that Scrum Master and Product Owner would uh, uh, need to do with nine volunteers plus myself. They are not full-time, but they collaborate as a cross-functional team. Some will focus a bit more on uh, the Scrum Master-like things, and it's good to have maybe some of the managers also joining in this community because it makes life sometimes a bit easier. So, and they, they focus a bit more on Scrum Master. Some will focus more on the, the product owner role and the needs that need to happen. So, but what is interesting to, to see is that all are able to cover for each other. So there's lots of freedom to step out, step in, have holidays, no holidays. So um, everybody is at the same pace, with the same understanding, with the same alignment, with the same focus, working towards impactful change. I love it. And I also work with another customer which already had Scrum Masters and Product Owners functions applied in their organization. So I have set up a similar community, including Product Owners, Scrum Masters, and even management to get a real change ongoing. So there are two different approaches. They both have their pros and their cons. Which one is going to be more useful in your context? I don't know. You need to try it out and maybe share some of your learnings and experiences in this comments here. Thanks and see you around. Bye-bye.